Security personnel take over the APC Secretariat as jostling for offices intensifies. And pictures of Northern governors with associates of banditry kingpin Toji raises concern. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cohn. As the fighting for various positions in the All Progressive Congress APC gathers more momentum, there was tension yesterday at the National Secretariat of the Party where it witnessed a surge of police presence. Party sources stated that this was to forestall any breakdown of law and order following continued interplay of forces that led to the scheduling of the convention for February the 26th. Meanwhile, the APC has denied zoning party officers who uh, while releasing the timetable for scheduled activities, this would be for the National Convention slated for February the 26th. Now, this happened on a day supporters of the presidential aspirant of Vice President Yemi uh, Osibajo urged the President, Mohamed Buhari, not to allow looters hijack delegates to the APC National Convention. Well, joining us to break this down is Ladipo Johnson. He is a... Uh, legal practitioner, and of course, Biodo Shomi, who is a political analyst. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnson, for joining us. Good evening. So uh, there's a lot that's leading up to the convention. We have heard stories of how uh, governors forestalled the hijacking of the convention in itself. We've also seen where uh, certain uh, governors have said that, look, we're not going to allow this election also be hijacked by certain powers that be. But let's look at the situation. It seems like a confusion, but then there are people, politicians who tell you that these are the things that happened just before a national convention. Yes, um, there's always some methodology to madness or what have you. Um, it's the season, it's the beginning of the season. And um, I think things will only intensify before um, February, um, February the 26th. 26th. The party probably had, um, uh, there are many arms to the party and um, there are many different groups, many interest groups and they, a lot of them or some of them are aggrieved and um, hence, you know, you've had for months, you've had people calling for the convention, people saying no, in fact recently, we heard that they might even postpone it till yes. July. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why you saw the police presence, um, because they know that um, uh, people might try to take laws into their own hands and mm -hmm. they express their frustrations and what have you. Um, it's natural in the African context, um, especially where um, you have some stronger individuals trying to um, clinch the ticket of the party for the presidential um, elections. Uh, because the zoning or lack thereof or the positions of the executive will determine a lot of things mm. when it comes to the um, primaries. We're talking about zoning. Recently, it made news that certain party offices had been zoned uh, to different parts of the country. I, I just want to quote the, um, the spokesperson of the party, John Akwanodoidege. He did um, outrightly say there was no such thing. Yes. And then he, of course, talked about a timetable that was scheduled um, for the activities of the convention. Uh, he said the activities will begin receiving the interim report of the APC National Reconciliatory Team led by former governor of Nasara State, Abdullahi Adamu, on January the 31st, which is coming. Let's talk about the reconciliation, which is a big deal. Yes. Um, so far, the APC has continuously told us that they're, they're reconciling aggrieved factions, but we keep seeing these issues, you know, creep up. Uh, Dito for Oshun State, Oshun is gearing up for elections and we're seeing a division within the party. Um, we've also seen same in Ogun. I mean, there's literally 
no state that is not secure. Maybe the APC in Lagos is the only state that we have not Even necessarily. Even in Lagos. Well, I'm just I saying. Remember that you had different congresses. We had yeah. parallel congresses. So, so, but but the APC keeps saying that they have reconciled most of these grieving or uh, factions. And then February 26 is around the corner. Who's to yes. say that there's going to be an agreement of sorts if the warring factions have not necessarily come to a table of agreement? Yes, um, if they haven't, then the party will do its best to bring them to a round table before the convention. Um, the party hierarchy will try to use the weight of Mr. President to whip certain people into line. But the president seems to be aloof in all of these things. That, the president has tactfully, that's why if I you said, ask me, party, stayed out of the this. The party will try to. They will try to because they might not otherwise be able to um, get a consensus arrangement mm -hmm. um, because we've seen that um, it's as if there are so many interests um, uh, fighting <laughs> for the soul of the party. Hmm. So the, um, what I see or foresee is that um, it's either going to implode hmm. after February 26, or they have to go the way of a consensus arrangement. And while some people will not be happy, you know, they'll try to make amends and with um, what we call uh, the carrot and stick approach. So Mr. President and the leadership of the party have a lot of work to do within the next um, one month to make sure that they have um, a convention that is not just um, fair to most of the groups, but that is seen to be fair. To it needs to because the country is watching I'm waiting to see what is happening. And if you want to rule, you have to show that you have internal democracy and what have you in your party. All right. Well, we're being joined by Bjorn Shomi, who is a political analyst. Mr. Shomi, thank you so much for joining us. Great. We'd like for you to chime in on this issue. We're looking at what's been happening leading up to the convention proper, which will be taking place February 26. Of course, the preparations begin from 20th, where delegates will be registered, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but Mr. Johnson here is saying that there are just the two ways to go about this. That there might, if the if there is no reconciliation, because we've heard over and over the Booney-led um, committee saying that they are reconciliate, uh, having reconciliation within the factions across the country. We've also seen the re-registration exercise that happened uh, on a large scale across the country. But then we still see that there is a fight within the party between the class of 1999 governors versus the governors of today and other powers that be. What does that leave the APC come uh, February 26? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I hear. What's the dynamic of the convention? Yes, I am. Okay. Now, uh, we are in a very interesting time uh, for one reason. The ruling party is the APC. And then we have seen the role played by the executive to keep all options open. From direct primary to indirect primary to consensus. Now, what is the next step for the APC? Um, already it is clear that there are different forces within the party. The governors are divided into two. Um, you have those who are following the national leader, uh, Masho Ajitinobu, and you also have those who are kicking against him. That is not unexpected, and it's not unusual. The interesting part, which many people be watching for, is that if should APC go the line of consensus candidate, that would lead to huge acrimony within the party. Hmm. Um, particularly when it will only be done through affirmation. You know, the leaders are agreeing on one person 
and then you know affirming uh, through the delegate system. The problem in all this is that the national leader of the party itself is actually a candidate or is hoping to be a candidate in that election. So which leadership will meet or which faction? Is it of the, N uh, the AFPP or the ACM faction that will meet and affirm, uh, give affirmation to a consensus candidate? Mm -hmm. So this is the problem. Whichever they go, when it comes to consensus, it will always be contentious and there will be more problems. The uh, preference will have been direct primary, mm -hmm. which again um, is substantial arm of the party is against, particularly. Are you still there? Mr. Chomi, are you still there? I think we lost that connection uh, briefly. But let me come back to you. Can the APC at this point afford an elective um, convention of sorts? I mean, because, I mean, there's so many pointers. Now the National Assembly seems to be wanting to expunge the idea of a consensus, which might never, going forward, might not be, you know, an option in the party. So it's either you're going the indirect way or the direct way. But again, let's come back to the intricacies of what will happen. What do you suspect would happen, aside from the consensus, which has al almost always been the way of the APC, where they all agree that this is the candidate of the day and, it, you know, that person takes yeah. the day. But then the APC of 2015 is not the APC in 2022. The, uh, the, the blueprint for 20, 2015 was to kick Jonathan out of office yeah. and bring change. But that has changed. So what would be the consensus or the bringing together or the glue that would bring all of these warring factions together to move forward the APC if they intend to win the elections come 2023? Um, well, your guess is as good as mine. Um, it's a difficult one. <laughs> as we said, as Mr. Shomi said, the contending forces at play and um, it goes uh, this goes way beyond the APC it goes to the issue of north and south and what have you um, I do not know how they are going to, you see they, they have a problem if <laughs> if um, it goes a particular way then it is very easy for others to go the other way. So you're suggesting that the, the opposition and other parties are watching to see what the APC oh, will do? Oh, yes, they are. But they, I, I spoke to um, uh, the um, secretary of the Northern Elders Forum, and he yeah. did say succinctly that the North does not care where the candidate emerges from, but they're most interested in what that person has to offer. So they're saying we're laying sentiments aside. No, they so zoning not that. necessary. They, in fact, they they've been pushing that we justice in zoning. When, when you hear that, exactly, you've answered the question. When you hear that, what he's saying to you is that, hey, forget the issue of zoning. It's a good, good um, phrase and position to hold now. Um, you hear people say, look, the state of the economy, the way we are now in Nigeria does not call for zoning. It calls for the best possible person or team wherever they may come from. And um, that is all well and good. Of, of course, it makes sense that we should look at that. But if you've been rotating, you understand? Mm -hmm. And then it now gets to a particular time where some people feel, oh, you should rotate back to us. And then you say, no, we've never zoned officially. And it's the truth. It's never been done officially. It's not in the Constitution. <laughs> you understand? It's always an understanding. Um, and, well, you get people from the APC saying that that was a PDP arrangement, or the people from the PDP saying, that was an APC arrangement. Let's look at the candidate. But you know something about Nigeria? In a funny way, water will always find its level. <laughs> How do you mean? How exactly do you mean? Uh, water will find its level. You will see 
that um, even now, you're seeing aspirants going to so-called leaders or particular leaders who are not even affiliated officially to their, to their, to their party. Hmm. Right? Because we are still going to get, I don't want to call it an earthquake, but mark my words, in the next um, two months or so, a lot of things are going to happen that will change politically, that will change the outlook so of the average so man towards 2023. So bottom line, three. I, 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 you, it might not be what you're saying. Whatever happens on February 26 will determine who moves from party A to party B. There's going to be um, a lot of dancing. There are people in the PDP now who are unhappy, hmm. but are waiting to see what will happen from the APC Congresses mm -hmm. uh, convention mm -hmm. to see whether they should gravitate towards the APC or whether something else, some other vehicle mm. will be available. So the bottom line is that um, the, and that is why the Buni led team was or seemed to want to delay mm. The convention. I see. Because the later it comes, the more difficult it is for people to move left or right huh. after the result of the convention. And those who feel they might be cheated at the convention are saying, let's have it now. Let's have it now. Huh. So that their options can be open. This seems to be a, a hot a case of a hot potato. I'm talking about the APC. Mr. Shomi, thank you for joining us again. Apologies for the cutoff. Um, now, looking at the issue of zoning and who gets what, um, there are certain people, in fact, especially southern leaders, are insisting that no governor, no sitting governor, be given um, a position in the leadership. In other words, they're saying, we do not want a boonie situation over again. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, it's most unlikely that APC will try uh, put a sitting governor in as the chairman of the party. Uh, the reasons are uh, very clear. Uh, we already know of the controversy that surrounded the uh, UNI and the fact that he got away with it, even the fact that um, they post the caretaker committee post, is not a permanent um, um, elective you know, office. So therefore, uh, the judgment is very clear. Mm -hmm. They are not likely going to go that, down that route. What the APC seems to be trying to set to is to default certain position. The chairman of the chairmanship of the party, they are indirectly defaulting it to the north. Mm. And also the presidential candidate. Once the chairmanship goes to the north, it is more likely than not that the presidential candidate will come from the south. Irrespective of those who are commenting that the north has not zoned. The fact is, uh, the essence of federal character principle in the constitution is to ensure that everybody has sense of belonging and to avoid domination of the country by a section or some sections of the country. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when people argue that is not in the Constitution, they need to read not only the letters of the Constitution, and um, also read the spirit of the Constitution. Mm. Okay. So that is the fact on this matter. So APC is likely going to go south for presidential candidate and not, you know, for uh, chairmanship of the party. I see that. And I don't think any governor will be a candidate. I mean, I see that because, I mean, at least so far, 11 persons have indicated interest. I'd just like to quickly call out their names. They formally declared interest in the party's apex seat. Six of them are governors, in fact, former governors. Um, Tanko Al-Makura, Abdulaziz Yari, Alimodu Sheriff has also indicated interest. Isa Yuguda, um, 
former governors of Nasarawa, Zamfara, Borno, and Bauchi states, respectively. Now, also in the race, we have Danju Magoje, we have George Akume, both former governors of Gombe and Benue states. Um, other aspirants are Sani Musa, Sali Mustafa, um, we have Sylvester Modinafe, uh, Sani Shinkafi, and uh, the 36-year-old Etsu Mohammed. And if you notice, the, almost all of them come from a certain region. Um, and it almost seems very deliberate that these are the only people who seem to have indicated interest in that seat. So it means that we can almost preempt, or can we almost preempt, where the presidential ticket will be zoned to. Yeah, what you see with all those um, the candidates from former governors from the North coming out um, is basically part of the politicking within the APC. Uh, the fact of the matter is, even in the South, there are people who are jostling, you know, for vice presidency and who would rather have a northern governor continue. But the position of the 17 southern governors are very clear that this post needs to come to the south, even though the north felt that that should have been done through consultation and negotiation rather than um, making a demand. What is most likely going to happen at the end of the day is you would end up having many of them stepping down under the guise that they were stepping down for a consensus candidate. Mm. Uh, the fact of the matter is the candidates to be challenged as of today remains Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, who is the national leader of the party. But you are likely going to continue to have this politicking going on um, people modeling, politicians modeling, you know, the whole issue up. And at the end of the day, um, they will end up saying, well, there will be crisis if we go for direct primaries or indirect primaries. So we want to go for a consensus candidate. So mm -hmm. this is part of the game that is going on currently. It, it depends on the other faction within the party, you know. Uh, it depends on their response and their strategy that would dictate whether those who are jostling to ensure a consensus candidate succeed or not. Mm -hmm. And the position of the president in this matter is very important. I'm sure APC will not want a situation where the country is further polarized and the party polarized to the point of being crippled. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that is what they want. I think they'll be mindful of the consequences of every step being taken. In everything that we've said tonight, the name Bola Tinubu keeps coming up and he seems to be the strong man within the party. Uh, and, of course, it makes me really wonder, um, what about the other people who have indicated interest? Uh, and, and how much of a chance would those people stand? Don't forget, there are people who are jostling for the vice president, who's also from the same region, who is um, the, the party's um, national leader. Um, what are the chances? I mean, we're not preempting anything, but, uh, I mean, we're looking at the body language. Uh, the likes of Odjuz Kalu has said um, that he's not desperate to... I mean, he, he somewhat changed his song and dance. He, in, in, at first, he sounded more convinced that he would want to be the presidential candidate. But now he's saying he's not as desperate to lead the country, but he's just as interested in the ticket. Is that for me? Yes. Oh, OK. Yeah, you have different interests. Um, known faces and unknown faces coming up, you are likely going to have more candidates coming out from uh, the South. Well, they are quite clear for obvious reasons. You know, some want to negotiate their own future in terms of um, what do they get at the end of the day. And the only way to make yourself, throw yourself out positively, is to come out and challenge with a deal to negotiate. Um, so a position for your present future. Um, also in the Southwest, there are also many candidates, including governors who are about to leave office, mm -hmm. who are thinking about future beyond 2013, uh, 2023. 2023. So um, they are also part of the people uh, within the race. The, the likes of um, Al Makura and some other governors, Uni and all of them from the North, are uh, reaching out to um, uh, Southern candidates with a view to um, have a viable um, mm -hmm. vice presidency.
But when you look at the whole reading, it's quite unlikely that APC will not go for a southern presidential candidate. Hmm. If they opt for a northern candidate, and the PDP opt for a northern candidate, what does that vote for the country? We are already in a serious crisis in the country. People are challenging, you know, the nationhood, mm. you know, and we will only be playing into the hands of those who are hell-bent on self-determination. Okay. Well, on that note, I, I just, I've just been told that we're almost out of time. I wanted to, for you to quickly just give us your final thoughts. Um, it looks like um, we, we'll have to just wait and see. Yeah, we have to wait and see. The, yes. the, the, um, the, the, the key to it now is not those who have um, indicated or indicated that they want to contest. Um, there are some who are there, even from the South, who will rely heavily on the majority of the party that is from the North mm. or that are from the North. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So they haven't played their hand yet. They haven't showed whatever. And I think that is one of the reasons why Ashwaju, as a tactician, probably felt, look, let me throw my hat in the ring. Let's see what will happen. Let's huh. throw everything up there. Well, let's see who holds the Joker card uh, at the end of the day. Well, Fiona Shomi is a political analyst. Uh, Ladipo Johnson is a, a, a lawyer. We'll still have Ladipo in the studio after this break. Thank you so much, Mr. Shomi, for speaking with us. Pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we discuss the illegal oil mining activities plaguing River State. Um, we'll take a break and come back. <laughs>